We got our, our pride coming up. My brother Mark and I, we both had asked to speak at this event. You know, they wanted us to tell people about our stories. They want to hear our testimony of how it is we reconcile who we are with the God that we serve. I've always loved the Lord. Since I was a little boy, you see, I would get up on Sunday mornings, and while everybody else in my house was asleep, I would get up and I would walk to the little church down by my house to go to Sunday school and I would go to worship. And when I couldn't get there, I'd find a ride and go somewhere else. And I remember all of my life always finding a way to get to the house of the Lord. Because you see, God was the only one that would accept me when the world would reject me. You see, when I was that little child that was growing up in a little country school and getting bullied because I was a little bit feminine, because I spoke with a lisp, or maybe it's because my nose was too big, or maybe it's because of anything and everything the cruel children did to one another, it was the only person I had to go to was the Lord. And then when I started to realize that there was something a little bit off about me, Brother Rob. You see, I had to realize that I wasn't attracted to the girls like everybody else. And the little church that existed here at that place, I remember riding my little bicycle, going down the road with the Spirit of God speaking to me. And he says, I've created you for who you are for a purpose. Yeah. Because if I would have created you any other way, you wouldn't have been able to be a minister to those that need to hear a preacher the most. Come on. And I remember riding my bicycle and just riding for hours, praying and seeking after God and coming by this very building at 14 years of age. And the Spirit of God telling me, not only did I create you to be gay, but here in this little town of Danville, there will one day be a church where you'll be able to walk right in the Spirit that will preach the affirming truth of the message. And let me tell you, it took some 25 years. But then we had a pastor from Moraine, Ohio, who grew up not far from here, who God called to this very place. And you know that very church that God spoke to me about, it was given to us for free. We didn't pay a dime for this place. And you know when I moved back here as a rock bottom and again, brother Robert, and God raised me up. You want confirmation that God has created you to be who you are today? Let me tell you, I didn't choose to be gay until I was in my 20s. If I had my way, then when I would have went to the altars all throughout my teenage years, God would have delivered me from it. But we heard it all our lives. We heard, you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you're an abomination, God despises you. How many people have heard that preached about us? Oh, Hallelujah. But here we are doing the very things that other people told us that we would never do. Here we are singing our songs and praising our God and worshiping Him. Here we are living in the blessings that God has for us when everybody told us that because of who we are, we would never be able to obtain anything from the Lord. Come on now. I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts. Oh, shut up, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just give you all the praise and the glory for all of your wonderful blessings, for all of your promises that have come true. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to turn to the book of Acts and go to chapter 10. You see, this month is Pride Month. Oh, where's some Kleenexes? Hallelujah. Oh. And uh, I want to tell you, our church is still facing the same problems we faced. 2,000 years ago. You see, we as a people have always thought that there is somebody who is unequal to us. We have always thought throughout history that there are some groups of men and women that are better than other groups of men and women. And yet, we have yet to learn what the Bible teaches us about 